A man is at the chemist, holding his mobile phone behind his back. A woman approaches and manages to unlock his phone somehow. She then opens his camera and takes some pictures of herself. Suddenly, she realizes that a police officer is approaching. She then decides to kiss the young man. The officer approaches them and asks if she can tell him the contents of her bag. The woman says that she was just buying some medicine with her husband. The young man denies it and says that that woman isn't his wife. The officer says that he understands and instructs the woman to show him the contents of her bag. The young man, after realizing that that woman was just stealing medicine, decided to change his behavior towards the inquiring officer as he felt compelled to understand the whole situation. The young man decided to tell the officer that that woman was indeed his wife. Confused, the officer asks how that's even possible. He says that he can't understand why he said she wasn't his wife then. The young man says that they're just having a bad day in their relationship. The officer, not convinced, says that he doesn't believe them and that the woman is basically a thief. The woman tells the officer that he can't treat her like that and that she doesn't owe him any kind of explanation. The woman tells the young man to just go ahead and show the officer that she's on his phone's lock screen. The young man shows it to the officer and tells him to just forget that because he was going to talk to his wife. The policeman seems to believe their evidence and walks away. Moments later, in the street, the young man asks the medicine robber why she was stealing them. The young thief says that she doesn't need to explain everything to him and tells him to just go ahead and hand her her medicine. The young man says that he's only going to hand that to her after she explains the whole thing. The woman refuses to explain what's going on and insists on getting it back. Not impressed, the young man confirms that he's not giving it back to her until she explains everything. The woman then reveals that she stole the young man's wallet. She says that if he doesn't hand her medicine back to her, she is going to keep his wallet. The young man asks her which one is better for her, in all fairness. The woman says that it's obviously her medicine and tells him to hurry up and give it back to her. The young man agrees and says that they need to do it at the same time. The woman agrees. She then drops his wallet on the floor and walks away with the medicine she stole. The young man, puzzled and feeling very curious about the whole thing, says that he could have gone home and avoided being involved. But the whole situation was making him very confused, so he decided to investigate. Later that day, the woman is walking on the pavement on her own with the medicine she stole. Suddenly, a car approached her and honked at her. The driver opens the window and invites her to come with him. The woman then tells the young man to leave her alone, asking what he wants with her. He says that she would love to pay him for the medicine if she had money. The young man says that it's not about money and invites her to get inside his car. The woman refuses to get in. The young man claims that he has something to show her. He opens the rear window, and a kid greets the woman, calling her mummy. The mother, scared, asks what he's doing in there. The boy says that the doctor said that she was his friend. Confused, the woman asks the young man what her son means by doctor. The young man reveals that he's indeed a doctor and that he felt compelled to help her because he caught her stealing medicine. The woman then asks the doctor how he knew that that boy was her son. He says that he was able to track her with the picture she left on his phone. The woman then accepts to go inside the car. The doctor then asks where she lives because he's going to drop her there. The woman then tells him to go ahead because she's going to guide him there. Later, the doctor gets to know where the family lives. The boy welcomes him to his mansion and says that he loves that place because he has plenty of space to play around. The doctor tries to say that it's just a squall. The mother stops him and asks him to restrain himself from commenting. She then tells her son to play around while she talks to the doctor. The boy agrees and walks away. The doctor then asks how she is even capable of raising her child in those conditions. The mother says that if he's there just to mock her, he can get out because he doesn't need any more of that. She says that he didn't even ask why. The doctor says that he's not mocking her and that he only finds it really unfair that a kid is raised in such conditions. He says that she should have been looking for work or doing something about that. She says that he's judging her without understanding the whole thing. She asks if he reckons that one day she just decided to raise her child in a park. She says that she had plenty of reasons to be forced to live like that. The doctor says that he understands that things can be hard in life, but he just doesn't understand how they ended up like that. She explains that her ex-husband, trying to seek revenge, put charges on her, and now she can't find work. The doctor then asks what the child's health issue is. The mother says that her son was diagnosed with leukemia. 
She says that she spent all her savings to buy his medication, and now she can't do anything else about it. She says that she's just trying to give him a decent life. She says that she's trying to sell some sweets in the street to raise some money and that it's still very hard to get a decent amount. The man says that he understands that it must be really hard to live like that and asks why she hasn't done anything to clear her charges. The mother says that it's not that easy and that it's a very tricky situation. The boy then suddenly returns to his mother after playing around and claims to be hungry. The mother explains to him that he will have to wait a bit more. The doctor invites them to eat at his house. The mother tells him that it's a pleasure to be invited, but she has to refuse. The doctor says that he can't leave them like that and insists that they come with him. Later, at his place, the doctor serves the young child. The kid asks if he was the one who cooked it. The doctor says that he didn't because there were people there to do it. The boy then asks his mother if she would like to eat with him. She refuses and says that she's not that hungry. Confused, the doctor asks why she is refusing to eat something if he told her she could eat anything she wanted. The woman then says that he shouldn't worry about her. The doctor tells the children to eat as much as he wants while he talks to his mother. The doctor then invites the mother to follow him. They sit next to each other. The doctor tells her that he has to admit that she has raised a gentleman. She thanks him for it. The young man says that he doesn't understand how someone would be capable of neglecting them like that. She says that she also doesn't understand, especially because his father had the guts to ditch his old child. She says that he despises him, not because of her but because of their son. She says that he shouldn't have become a father at all. The doctor says that he's really concerned about the child's illness and asks her to tell him something about the father's whereabouts. She says that she doesn't know anything about him apart from his name. The doctor then asks the father's name. The mother says that her ex-husband is called Marco Mendez. The doctor then becomes really uncomfortable. The woman asks what's wrong with him and if he knows something about him. The doctor says that it's a terrible coincidence because that man is his boss, the owner of the hospital he works for. The mother says that she's sorry to hear that and that she doesn't want to cause him any problems. The young doctor says that he's sorry to say that, but he will have to tell them to leave. The mother says that her son is still eating. The doctor tells her to hurry up and leave as soon as possible. Minutes later, after being told to leave, the boy says that he doesn't want to leave because he loves that place. The doctor tries to convince him that he needs to go home. His mother explains that it's late and they need to go back to their house. She then tells the doctor to never mention to his boss that they were there, and if possible, don't even mention that he met them. The young man tells her to relax because he's not going to say a single word. They say good to the doctor and leave. Later, escorted by his bodyguards, the boss arrives. The doctor greets him and asks if he's all right, willing to tell him something. The boss shakes his hand and says that it's a pleasure to see him. He tells the employee that he's in a hurry and that they can talk later. The doctor says that it's a quick thing and that it's of extreme importance. The boss says that he's in a real hurry, so he can't spend a single minute there. The doctor insists on telling him, stating that it's really urgent. The boss still refuses and says that he's late to his scheduled meeting, which involves a lot of money. The doctor then decides to tell him right away that he wants to tell him something about his child. The boss asks how he knows about his child. The doctor says that he found him living in the street. The boss asks him if he was accompanied by someone. The doctor says that he found him with his mother. The boss says that he doesn't know if she told him something, but that she thinks he does dodgy and illegal deals. He says that if she told him something like that, it's a lie. He then asks where he can find her. The doctor then reveals the location they're settled in and that his child suffers from a serious illness. The boss thanks the doctor for the information and says that he is going to be in charge of that. The young doctor says that he can help him if he wants. The boss says that there's really no need because he's going to take care of it himself and that his information is enough. The boss then tells his bodyguards that they know what they're supposed to do. He instructs them to get rid of them without leaving any clues. Later, at the location the mother is settled in, her shady ex-husband, followed by his bodyguards, approaches her from behind. He says that he finally managed to track her. The woman asks what he is doing there and how he found her. She then realizes that the doctor grasped her. The woman tells him to leave her alone. The shady ex-husband says that he won't go until she tells him the whereabouts of the kid. She refuses to tell him and tells him to leave them alone. She asks what he really wants and what the stupid doctor told him. 
He says that the doctor told him that the child was ill. The woman asks why he wants to see the child now if he already knew that he was ill previously and never did anything to help him. She says that he was the one who ruined their lives when he blamed her for his dodgy deals. The shady man says that it was the right thing to do because she never really loved him anyway. He says that that is just a consequence. She says that if he felt that she didn't love him, he should have told her instead of putting her in jail. The ex-husband says that she was released very quickly and that he was the one who paid for it. She says that he only paid for her release because he wanted to force her to stay with him. The ex-husband explains that he did want to be with her, but he wasn't expecting that she was going to take the kid with her. She says that she doesn't love him, and that's it, and that he should leave her alone. He says that the reason he's really angry is because she claimed to the doctor that he was a bad person. The woman says that she was just telling the truth. The boss then says that she can tell everyone whatever she wants about him because no one will ever believe her. Meanwhile, the doctor, accompanied by the child, records everything with his mobile phone. He says that he's the powerful one. His wife asks what he wants to do with her then. The shady man then says that she's going to disappear. The woman then begs him to spare her life. The shady ex-husband says that it was her own choice. She says that he doesn't need to kill her to show his power. The man says that he's not the one who's going to do it, but his bodyguards. He then gives them the command to get rid of his ex-wife. Suddenly, the doctor hushes in with the child and says that he's recording everything they're saying. The boss asks his employee if he reckons that a recording is going to do him any damage. He says that it might not, but the police are certainly coming for him. Two officers then approach the shady man and say that he's been arrested. The two bodyguards try to defend him, but he tells them to stay. He tells the officers that they should know who he is. He says that his name is Marco Mendez, a very powerful man. The officers say that they know exactly who he is, and that's why they're there. He tells the officers to get rid of that scum in front of him. He threatens his employee and family. The superior then tells the other officer to carry on. The officer then tries to handcuff Marco, but he says that he doesn't need it because he's going to surrender. The officers then walk away with the criminal. The boy, confused, asks who that threatening man is. The doctor tells him that he was just a loony. The mother thanks the doctor for helping them out and says that she doesn't really know how to retaliate. She asks why he risked telling him their whereabouts. He says that he wasn't really sure about what she said, so he had to see it with his own eyes, and that in the end, it was worse than what she told him. He says that Marco was a really evil and vindictive man. He explains that he's really sorry for kicking her out and that he didn't mean any harm. He says that he was only trying to protect her. He says that the whole situation therein is really unfair, all because of a megalomaniac idiot. She says that she really suffered during her time in jail and all, but that she's glad they were able to sort everything out. She says that from now on, she is going to be independent. The boy then asks her if they're going to keep living in that place. The doctor then offers them shelter and says that they can live with him if they want. The mother says that she can't really accept that. The boy then begs her to accept. The doctor says that she doesn't have any choice because he can't let them live in that place. The mother says that it's a great opportunity to recover and says that she insists on doing something that might be useful to him, because he doesn't want to be a burden. The young doctor tells her to relax and that he doesn't need to do anything. He says that he's talking to a very good solicitor who can clear her charges. He says that she will then be able to regain her company and then she's going to be the one to employ him. He tells her to relax because everything will be fine. The woman then thanks him for his massive help. The doctor says that it was a pleasure and they walked to his house together.